thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm happy to be here. My name is Ben Kaufman, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the Austrian theory of the business cycle uh, and how I believe we could use Bitcoin to transform the economy from such recurring booms and busts to more sustainable economic growth. Um, so let's start by understanding how, how the economy grows, um, what it really looks like, this process. So as Manuel, uh, as Manuel said, uh, the division of labor is a, cri a critical part, Special specialization is a critical part uh, in economic growth, um, as Adam Smith also uh, suggested. But uh, I believe that the main uh, driver for economic growth, uh, also as Karl Menger said that, uh, is the availability of capital for production. So economic growth, uh, I believe, is all about uh, the availability of capital goods, uh, of factors of production. Um, for, from simple tools like this fishing rod to the more complicated um, tools like the huge vessels that we have today. Um, the more capital that we have, the more capital goods that are available for production, uh, the more productive uh, and efficient labor is and the more that we can produce as society. Um, but in order to have such capital goods, uh, those factors of production, we need to first take the time to produce them. That is, uh, we need to use what uh, Bombauer called uh, more roundabout processes of production. Uh, that is, first producing the, uh, the capital goods and only later producing with them uh, the consumption goods. Um, in short, it is like uh, we need to uh, move from short-term uh, from short-term view to a more longer-term view. Um, and longer are um, our processes of production. Um, so for example, we can think of a primitive fisherman. Um, he could either catch fish using his bare hands, um, just a few fish uh, today, or he could first take the time to build a fishing rod uh, and catch no fish at first, but later use it to, to catch much more fish. Um, but how does, the, how does a fisherman decide between these two uh, processes of production? Well, he, do, he does that according to his time preference. Uh, in simple terms, time preference, um, as uh, Professor Pouliot said before, time preference is the extent to which a person values the present uh, more than the future. Uh, so in our example, if the fisherman has a higher time preference, it means that he values the present um, much more than the future, and he won't find the increase in productivity which a fishing god could give him um, enough to compensate for delaying his uh, consumption today of fish. Uh, but if it's slow enough, uh, he will prefer to take the longer process of first producing the fishing god and only later um, use it to catch much more fish. But while our fisherman is working in isolation, this is not uh, the state of the market economy, which is about the division of labor. Um, so how does thing work in the market economy? Well, as people start uh, saving more and lowering their time preference, it will affect the interest rate. The interest rate uh, in the market is uh, the reflection of time preference of people. Uh, the lower the time preference of people, the more capital there is to borrow from, and the lower the time preference of people will be, uh, and the lower the interest rate will be. Um, now, as the interest rate is lowered, uh, entrepreneurs can obtain capital much more and much less costly. Capital is much less costly for entrepreneurs uh, to obtain, and so production will become more profitable. This is, uh, this is sorry, uh, entrepreneurs will then start loan, uh, taking on more loans and use these uh, funds uh, to expand their production processes to uh, take processes which are more roundabout um, of producing uh, increasingly more complex uh, processes. <clears throat> sure. yeah. So as the production expands, as entrepreneurs start taking more loans and use them to buy the goods that were saved in the first step when people started increasing their savings, uh, they will integrate the new saved capital into the production structure. Uh, they will use it to enhance the production structure and um, get the capital which was saved in the first step into the actual structure of production. 
Uh, this is how the division of labor works in, in the market, uh, in a sense. And so as, uh, as they start producing more, eventually there will be uh, new goods available uh, and new, uh, greater supply of goods available, which creates kind of a positive uh, feedback loop, uh, in a sense, of people uh, being able to uh, uh, produce and, and sa to save uh, even more capital without diminishing their consumption. Um, and use this ex uh, capital to produce even more, uh, lowering their time preference even further, and so on. Well, but now, now how do we get from such, uh, such um, a positive loop of economic growth to, to the business cycles? Well, according to the Austrian theory, uh, developed first by the economist uh, von Mises, uh, the problem starts when governments and banks start to expand credit. Uh, essentially, in the present, they do so in various methods, uh, quantitative easing or fractional reserve banking, which is uh, practically insured by the taxpayers, uh, or other accounting tricks. But the essential point is that they all uh, bring money into the economy, essentially out of thin air. Um, but how this new money affects the, the process that we just uh, discussed? So at first, the credit expansion re will reduce the interest rate. Uh, since credit is more of a, a abundant now, money is more abundant, uh, banks can loan uh, more in, uh, at cheaper rates without diminishing the, the money that they still hold. Uh, so the first consequence is that the interest rate will be lower. As we've seen, uh, as the interest rate is lower, entrepreneurs will start expanding their production. Production will become more profitable for them. Um, sorry. As, so as they start, uh, they will start taking out more loans and use, the, uh, and use them to buy capital goods. But as we've seen, the new money that they obtained was created essentially out of thin air. Uh, it was not because uh, new savings were uh, accumulated. Uh, no new capital is, uh, is actually available. Uh, and therefore, <clears throat> there will not actually be enough, uh, ca enough capital to match this new demand. So in a sense, there will be more demand for production goods, but not more supply, uh, which will cause their prices to rise. And so as the prices of production goods uh, start rising, entrepreneurs will have to take more loans in order to finish the production uh, processes that they have started. Uh, in a sense, there is an, an illusion that there is more capital available than actually there is. Uh, it is as if our fishermen, uh, if we continue our example, uh, would try to build a, a huge fishing vessel uh, while he doesn't have the capital to finish, uh, to finish uh, such production is in his lifetime. He will essentially be wasting his uh, time and effort to build something which will remain unfinished. Um, <clears throat> and so when entrepreneurs need, have to start taking on more loans, uh, the interest rate will start to, draw, uh, it will start to rise. Uh, there will be new demand for loans to complete all production processes which will push the interest rate back up. This is when all the investments which were made during the, the boom period uh, during the, exp uh, the period when the production started to expand uh, will be exposed as um, unprofitable. So, in a sense, the, the boom basically induced uh, investments in projects which were unprofitable in the real interest rate, in interest rate which corresponds to the actual time preference of people. Um, as there is not enough capital uh, to actually complete all the projects do, uh, and this uh, shortage of capital will become apparent, um, they will not, entrepreneurs will not be able to complete their projects. They will not have enough capital and there will be massive uh, collapse of businesses and of course high unemployment, uh, which, we known as, which is known as a recession. During the recession, all what Mises called malinvestments are liquidated, uh, and capital left is either lost or uh, moved to other uh, more profitable businesses. In a sense, it is, uh, if we continue our example even further, it is our fishermen realizing that his plans were unrealistic, 
uh, and stopping to waste his time and money on this uh, on the uh, ambitious construction of a vessel and actually moving to build something more realistic like the fishing rod. Um, so essentially during the boom all these small investments that are liquidated uh, are basically curing the market from the uh, expansion or that happened in the first step. Uh, it is the readjustment of the market to real conditions uh, of time preference of people. And so eventually as all the mal investments are liquidated um, and the capital that, uh, is being moved to, uh, according to the real time preference of people, the economy can go back to its uh, actual, to its, to, on the right track. Uh, the economy can continue again to grow um, to actually grow and function. Um, but it is, so how do we stop such, uh, such business cycles? Well, it is true that we can uh, stop the, uh, we can delay the business cycle by returning to the first step and expanding credit uh, even further. Uh, it is not possible to completely prevent it by expanding credit. Uh, eventually, either resources run out or hyperinflation begins. Uh, so while central banks and governments now try to postpone such a uh, crisis, uh, crisis uh, all they do is just uh, enlarge the, the bubble which is uh, created. They keep the illusion of more capital available than there actually is and allow for the malinvestment uh, to uh, squander scarce capital uh, for a longer time period. So what can we do? Uh, well, the, uh, the prescription by the Austrian economists is to try and stop credit expansion from happening in the first place. Uh, and this is where Bitcoin comes in. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I believe that Bitcoin uh, could actually fix this as well. Um, first of all, uh, Bitcoin is non-inflationary. It is limited to 21 million units, as you know, and it is produced by proof of work. So essentially nothing out of thin air. Uh, this limits the inflation in the N0 supply, in the base uh, supply of money, uh, and prevents cre uh, credit expansion from beginning uh, in, those um, in those levels. Uh, which is the first critical uh, task to, to stop the credit expansion at all. Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So as Bitcoin is non-inflationary, uh, it is uh, created by proof of work and is limited to 21 million units. There is no inflation of the base layer. Um, there's no credit expansion in the, there's no, sorry, there's no monetary inflation uh, in the first step. Uh, there is no lender of last resort available. Uh, it forces uh, rigidity in the money supply, in the base money supply. And so, second point. So, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, short answer is yes, but I will return to that uh, later, okay? Yes. We will okay. have a Q&A yes. later or um, during the dinner, we, yes, can, sure. we can discuss this in more detail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Um, so the next point is that Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer cash, uh, chronic uh, cash system, as uh, Satoshi called it in the white paper. Uh, this means that there are no, uh, there's no necessary intermediaries in order to send and receive payments in Bitcoin. Uh, you don't have to rely on banks or other institutions in order to uh, send Bitcoin anywhere in the world. Uh, this allows for much clearer separation uh, of cash which is used for payments and cash which is intended for lending, uh, for investments. Um, and allows uh, more control of the people over their own funds and limits the power of banks to expand credit irresponsibly. So the last point is that Bitcoin is a digital asset. 
uh, and as a digital asset, it requires much less uh, centralis. It benefits much less from centralization of of uh, ownership over it. So Bitcoin, unlike gold, doesn't benefit that much from having such a huge Fort Knox, for example. Um, it re reduces the uh, barriers of entrance for uh, competition in uh, in banking for Bitcoin, uh, which I believe could. Li uh, in addition to, be, to Bitcoin having no uh, lender of last resort, I believe this could uh, force banks to be much more responsible uh, with credit expansion uh, and limit their ability to uh, cause such booms and busts. Yeah. Um, but so how, how, can we, how can we achieve such, such a transition, such a system? Well, first we have a few obstacles. Sorry, it's wrong slides. So first we have few obstacles. Um, I'm talking about mostly some politicians, um, central bankers, um, and economists. So there is no important, there, it is not important right now to deal with why these people like uh, Professor Krugman think that Bitcoin is evil. Uh, this is irrelevant for us right now. The only important thing to note is that they will not adopt Bitcoin on their own. Uh, they will not allow Bitcoin to be part of the uh, present financial system. And so the, the good news is that Bitcoin doesn't ask for permission. Um, it's already there. Uh, it doesn't wait for politicians or central bankers to approve it or to integrate it. Uh, it's already available for everybody to use. Um, and so, the, and so, as for example, um, uh, Congressman uh, Patrick McHenry said, Bitcoin is an unstoppable force. It is something outside of the, fin of the present financial system, which allows companies today to start building uh, a new infrastructure. This is just uh, a small example uh, of such companies, but it allows uh, businesses and individuals to start a, a parallel financial system. Uh, which does not depend on, on, the, on the present one. Uh, sorry. So, I believe that, of course, this change uh, to such a new, uh, a new system, such a, a young system also, cannot be an immediate change. Uh, nobody should expect Bitcoin to just uh, serve everybody right now, I believe. But this transition can be done very gradually. So already now, there are many businesses that start accepting very small amounts of their entire um, transactions in Bitcoin. They don't rely on it uh, for everything, but they already start interacting with it. Uh, there, is already many, there are already many individuals that put a fraction of their incomes and fraction of their savings into it. Um, and it is already, the change has already begun, I believe. Um, and as, uh, again, as uh, McHenry said, it is an unstoppable change, an unstoppable force. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, so I believe that the, the last thing I want to say is that my hope for the future, for all this uh, change, for, uh, for all this new system, is to uh, change public opinion uh, to care more about political and financial freedom and more on, on our um, subject here on the business cycle. I believe that Bitcoin could change the public opinion that there is an in, a so-called inherent tendency in the market economy for such booms and busts. I believe that Bitcoin could uh, prove to people that a free market money, uh, a free competition, uh, a free market competition for money is both beneficial and uh, allows for much more sustainable economic growth. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, and are there any questions? Yes. Um, thank you. Very nice. Um, yes, we had a few questions already during the talk. Yeah. Would you like to catch mm -hmm. up with this? Would you like with to your, continue? With your question? Perfect. Any mm -hmm. uh, more questions yes. here? Wait, I have a microphone. Concerning inflation, um, it's right, you have a limited amount of bitcoins, uh, mm -hmm. so this is not inflationary, but you are importing inflation from the real money, 
into Bitcoin, uh, assuming that the, U that the exchange rate stays the same and the US dollar, for example, has 5% inflation, mm -hmm. also Bitcoin has 5% inflation. So there yes. are inflationary effects. Well, as long as is... Bitcoin is not accepted as a mm -hmm. uh, payment system. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for the question. I don't, I mean, I don't think that, well, right, assuming that uh, inflation from, uh, the, that the, infla the price doesn't change, uh, there will be uh, inflation price, but I don't see any reason to believe that the price will not change. I mean, the price is changing uh, constantly. Uh, I don't see why, why it shouldn't uh, match the actual inflation. Uh, but again, I think that Bitcoin, uh, if we go to volatility, I believe that it will be much less volatile as it goes uh, more and more mainstream and have more and more users. But um, I also believe that it, it, it is counting for the, for the inflation uh, of the national currencies. Hmm? Very good. Uh, one more question? Any other? Or? Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Okay. That was Thank you very much. Really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 